Welcome to the Own It Powercast, the place to be when you get serious about making big changes and accelerating growth in your life and in your relationships. Finally create the life you've always wanted, living life on your own terms. Learn how to take your fear and turn it into powerful choices that will create sustained change. Now your host, Mary Baker. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Own It Powercast, a place where you can come to get what you need to move yourself forward. Hey, it's Mary Baker and welcome to episode 40, Getting Into Alignment and Living Out Your Truth. So all month, right, we've been talking about beliefs and values, about identifying, exploring them, and creating an action plan to really work on living them out. And I hope that you have gotten some great work out of these exercises this month. Today, as we're all cooped up with nowhere to go, right, let's put it all together and create a great way to align these incredible principles you've identified for yourself and actually tie them in to your life goals. But before we dive into all of that, I want to say my heart just goes out to the world right now. To all of you and everyone else out there who are afraid. Those of you, which is all of us, right, who are stressed out and frustrated because you're mourning, you're grieving all the little things you take for granted, like going to a movie, seeing your mom, or heck, even the gym. It's hard. There's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of anxiety and a lot of change. And it's when change is acted upon us or forced upon us, there's a kicking and screaming to acceptance process that goes along. And it's exhausting because on one hand, you're trying to stay safe and do the right thing and get everything together and, and take care of your needs and grieve at the same time. There's a lot. There's a lot going on underneath the surface there for all of us. And I also want to put a shout out to those of you on the front lines. Thank you for your bravery. We need you there. And it often brings tears to my eyes when I read and hear about people all over the place stepping up to help in any way they can, from making meals to making masks, I love who most of us are at the core. And that's been one blessing, right? To see people stepping up to help one another. I think we need to do that. We need to find a purpose in all of this. And we need to find some hope. So I just want to mention that. And in that vein, I'm actually going to be putting out a special episode later this week about healthy coping during this time. And I hope you find it helpful and pass it along to other people in your life who might need it. Okay. So, okay, so many of you have probably seen or at least heard about the iconic coaching tool called the Wheel of Life. It's in your bonus download. Please, if you want to stop the episode and go grab it or at least take a glance at it, or you can even just Google it if you need to. It's all over the place. It's been around forever. And basically, it is a wheel or a pie chart that is divided into eight different sections And each section represents an area of your life. In this episode, I want to shift it a little bit to focusing on the wheel of priorities, because that's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about beliefs and values and what matters most to you. So let's go through the eight sections right now a little bit, and I just want to briefly walk through each one so you have a good sense of what they mean. However, I also want you to make meaning for yourself for each of these. You know, don't box yourself in by any means, you know, for each area, think about what it means for you. Okay. So the first one we'll look at is friends and family. That's your kids, that's your family of origin, that's your extended family, That's your friendships, your neighbors, and maybe even the larger community like church groups, book club, neighborhood group, your spin class, whatever it is, you know, these people in your life. Okay. I would also almost want to put colleagues in here too, because we spend a hell of a lot of time with colleagues. They're like our second family. So go ahead and throw them in here too. The next one is your career. 
Now, this could be career you had before you came home to raise kids, could be the career you're working on, could be the next career you want to shift towards. Career just encapsulates all of that. You know, what do you want to be when you grow up? Your current job, maybe your hobby you want to turn into something. Be open when you hear the word career. So that's what I mean, your life's work. And we can have a whole bunch of different careers. It doesn't have to just be one. And I think these days that's more normalized anyway. So your career, you know, the is it satisfying? Do you like the work that you do? What does it entail? What is the commitment? Everything about it, okay? The next piece of pie is your financial, your money. It's like, where is your money? Do you make enough money? Do you make money? Where's your financial security? What are your plans? What is your behavior around money? Everything that has to do with money in your life, which of course money has to do with everything else in our life, doesn't it? So looking at the financial piece, and that could go anywhere from how to budget, how to save, how to spend, how to invest, how to plan. All right, number four, your physical environment. And This can mean different things. It could range from the inside of your home. It could be about aesthetics, about taking care of it. It could be your yard. It could be where do you live? Do you live in the city versus the country? Where in the world do you live? Do you like it? Do you not? Does it meet your needs? Does it feed you? What about your physical environments? It Also, like we talked about in previous episodes, you know, is it clean and serene? Is it cluttered? Is it kept up? I mean, all the things about your physical environment. I just want you to envision that in your head right now. Okay, moving over to the next one, fun and recreation. And I included fun, adventure, and travel in here. So what do you do for fun? That goes from kicking back on a Saturday morning to maybe traveling, maybe going for a hike, maybe hanging out with friends, maybe doing sports. It could be anything that you find fun and enjoyable. Some people include adventure in that, learning new things while they're having fun. Some people include joining a group to learn a new skill. It's whatever you want it to be. What is fun for you? And what is recreation? So You just don't want to be doing any work in this area, right? We just want to be having fun and enjoying it. Okay, number five, your physical health. It's pretty obvious, right? How is your physical health? That usually includes, you know, do we get enough exercise? Where's our nutrition? Where's our medical? Are we taking care of ourselves? What does our physical health look like? It could be medical conditions you might have. It could be your physical appearance. I mean, sometimes we're in decent physical shape, but we're too burnt out or tired to even go get a haircut or get some new clothes or pamper a little bit and take care of ourselves and rest. Your physical health. So, all right, moving on to personal growth. And this could be different for every one of us, right? It's how important is it to you and where is it? Like, have you worked on it for a while? I mean, obviously, you're listening to this podcast. So that tells me personal growth at least matters a little bit to you, or you wouldn't have tuned in. But where is it? And when I talk to people about personal growth, I encourage there are different facets to it. One is the work we do in our own head and in our heart. It's the journaling. It's the reading. It's the learning. It's being taught by somebody. It's having a support group, having loving accountability. Personal growth isn't always just an inside job. I think we have to do a lot of it in our relationships and we have to keep learning and growing and expanding and outgrowing, right? And the messy way of outgrowing things and getting angry and outgrowing even more. So we can't do that alone in our room. We have to do that with other people, which is why it's messy, So I just want you to take a look at that, your personal growth and kind of, you know, where you are, where you'd like to be, what you're proud of. Spirituality is the next one. And 
That could mean religious beliefs for you. It could mean meditation. It could mean nature. It could mean anything you want it to be. Please, I'm when I say spirituality, it's whatever it is defined for you. And that's a journey, right, for each of us. So spirituality, however you want to define that. And finally, your partner, your romantic person. Where's your romance in your life? What's that looking like? Is it even there? We kind of put this in a different bucket than friends and family because it is a different entity, or it should be. You know, the romance piece should be a different part of that. And your sexuality is included in that. So that gives you all eight, okay? So as you look at each area... I think you should be able to see your beliefs and your values right in front of you. So here's the thinking I would like you to do on this. In your handout, it has some instructions too, which is cool. Either way. All right. So for each slice, right, of your big bike wheel, I want you to kind of rate in terms of satisfaction, like it's where you want it to be or not kind of thing. With a zero being at the center of the wheel, Okay, the very center and 10 being at the very outside and one through nine in between, right? So you're working from inside the wheel towards the outside perimeter of the wheel. Zero to 10 in terms of, yeah, it's in a really great space right now. So in other words, look at how happy you are with each area. So here are some questions we can ask ourselves to find out our level of satisfaction, Because level of satisfaction, people, does not equal denial, okay? I just want to put that out there. I'm messing with you, but yeah, we could say, oh, yeah, it's great. I really want you to kind of peel the onion a little bit with this and really take a look at it. All right. These are some ways you can kind of do that. For money, like, is my money where I want it to be? Why or why not? What needs to happen? Do I have enough? Do I need a new career? Like, do I need to make a big upheaval in order to make more money? Do I need a better position where I am in my company? Do I need to add on another part-time job to pay down that debt? Where is my debt? Do I need to sell some stuff? Do I need to stop spending? Maybe I need to downsize. Maybe my partner and I just really need to rein in the budget. You see where I'm going here. And then future security. I mean, we're all adults, right? We're going to get old someday and we're going to need some financial security there too. So I would also include that, you know, kind of where's the long-term plan for that? For friends and family, have I been spending enough time with people I love? Well, probably maybe a hell of a lot lately, huh? (laughs) As we're stuck at home. And by the way, how's that going? Are you being in the moment? with them and actually taking advantage of being home or stressed out and distracted and freaked out. You know, maybe the current situation is shedding light on the quality of those relationships. Hell, even realizing maybe when this is over, you want to connect with healthier people, right? There's nothing like a crisis, I think, to bring out the actual level of dysfunction in families, sadly. You know, because it brings out all the control and other fear-based behaviors and boundaries. Boy, do they show up. I'll get into that more with my bonus episode on Corona coping, which is coming soon. All right. What about my health? So questions we can ask ourselves are, okay, so maybe I've been eating better again, but I want to lose some more weight, so maybe I'll put that at a six. Not a nine, not a 10, but not a two, right? Because I just started eating better a month ago. But what would make it a nine? What would make it a 10? I bet health and prevention is really on all of our minds these days too, especially looking at underlying conditions, right? We keep hearing that in the news, like diabetes and heart disease, things we can actually perhaps do something about. And what can we do to get healthier? I would also include stress here. Managing our stress is so important to do because we know if not, it'll wear out our immune system. So where is your health? Okay, moving on to your personal growth. What are you doing with that? Where are you? How much have you done so far? 
where do you need to grow? I mean, hopefully, if you've been listening to these episodes and reading and thinking and journaling and talking to people, you have kind of a sense of around what's next to be worked on. And do you have a place to learn, a place to be held accountable? Remember, we talked about a few moments ago, we can't do this work by ourselves. Okay, so where's your personal growth? And where would you like it to be? And put some aspirations down there too. You know, maybe you'd like to go do that retreat next year and you want to save up for it. And you'll see how these start interconnecting here. All the pieces of the pie. All right. And finally, your spirituality. Again, this is a journey. And if you're honest, whatever you believe or don't believe may have had at times where it was at zero, right? When it was maybe at a seven and maybe a two. Maybe it was never a priority for you. If it isn't, I would just put this as your grounding self-care. Like, how do you get grounded and de-stress yourself? That's good enough. Also, look at what's missing. I mean, you may need some big time healing around this, especially if you have shame or guilt or spiritual abuse in your background, because boy, that can be so damaging. Even your parents' views layered onto you can really affect how you see yourself spiritually, morally, sexually, all of that. So it can really impact all pieces of identity for you and your relationships. So you know, just exploring and looking around at different things, you know, look at maybe some more health oriented things, whatever you want to do here, going for a walk in the woods, meditation. My hope is that you can just look at this part and treat it as getting grounded and connected more with yourself. Okay. So here's why we want to take a look at the coaching wheel because you could have a really bumpy ride. If you look at your wheel, let's say you have it in front of you and love and relationships is at a nine because you just met a great person, but your money's at a two because you've been blowing money and your friends and family haven't seen you in a while because you've been out with your partners. That's at like a four and (laughs) Your spirituality is maybe a six, it's pretty groovy, but your health is tanking. Do you see how bumpy a ride that's going to be? That wheel won't roll, okay? So when we leave things in the dust to focus on one or two things as a top priority, we often end up neglecting other areas of our wheel and therefore end up with a lack of balance, You know, this can happen too when shit hits the fan, right? With like job loss, health issues, trauma, being stuck at home, right? (laughs) Can't go to work, readjusting things like moving, going back for a degree, having a new baby, divorce, natural disasters. These can all temporarily mess up things or even a long temporary, right? Divorce, it takes a while for people to get back on their feet. Natural disaster, same thing. Big health issue, yeah. So sometimes you're going to have to sacrifice a little bit of a bumpy ride to smooth it all out later, right? Like going back to school is going to squeeze time and money, but then it's going to bring you more money in the end, so it'll even out. So the idea is, okay, temporary is temporary, But chronic is what we want to fix. You don't want a bumpy wheel chronically forever and ever. All right. So how do we smooth it out? How do we smooth out your ride? How do we bring it all into balance where each area is reflecting what you believe in value, right? And it's at a pretty decent satisfaction level. I mean, even if you could get everything to a 6.2, that's great. I encourage a couple of things around this because I don't want you to get overwhelmed and stressed out and say, oh my God, you know, no, that's not what this is about. This is just really to raise some really wonderful awareness and to make some goals. All right, so I encourage to make a tentative plan, especially right now when everything's so uncertain, right? Like look at a calendar and look at your goals. What's doable a little bit each week? We've talked about this before, like do incremental savings, let's say. Tuck a little bit away every week if you want, just to 
know that you're working towards that is going to help you feel better. You're going to feel better about your money and your security. You know, what's doable? What needs to be prioritized right now, too? Because there might be some short-term things that get switched around with the long-term things, but then you want to flip them back, right? Like if you need cash right now, you're probably not going to go spend money on fixing up the house, as an example, because your house would be your environment. Maybe health right now is the most important thing, but then maybe in the future, like we all would, right? We'd like to go see our friends more in real time and give them a hug. Maybe if your 401k got pummeled, you may take a deeper look at your money overall, your long-term planning. Okay, so looking at each area and what are some little things that you can do now, and some things may have to wait, and that's okay. I just want to let you know that when you make a plan, it's going to feel better, but you know that. The second thing is try to bite size it or at least right size it. Trying to get all of your areas out to a 10 is going to make you a nut job and probably not the wisest choice anyway, even if you could pull that off for a few reasons. One is, you know, to really do this well, each area is a process and processes take time, hence the word process. They each are a journey in and of themselves, too, I think, like gaining more discipline, right, at the refrigerator door or saving money and not blowing it on Amazon. That's going to be two, four, or three back. We already know that. But learning as you go and watching yourself grow and being proud of yourself for the discipline, that's the wonderful process. I don't want you to jip yourself out of that. And the second thing is, you know, also to remember, duh, much of this is so much trial and error, right? And a learning curve. And reminder, you have no control over so many of the freaking variables, like your boss, like your people, like the economy, like COVID-19. Perfect example. Who saw that one coming last year? I know I didn't this time last year. So there are many nouns outside of our control, We want to keep it manageable and keep the focus on things that we actually can do and allow the process to unfold. It's going to be a beautiful part of your story. You don't want to leave that out and I don't want you to miss it. And finally, make it sustainable. Doing bits each week towards making your Fred Flintstone wheel roll a little bit better is so much more realistic and sustainable because here's the thing. If you want to do this, do this forever. Make your life better forever, not just for six months, not just for three months, not just for two weeks. So we have to do things that are actually sustainable. Now, some things, some areas that you have, you might be in crisis mode. And I get that. A lot of us are in crisis mode right now. And you're going to do whatever the hell you need to do to get out of crisis. And that's fine. And then when things even out a little bit, You'll look at your wheel again, and hopefully you're looking at this often, and you'll do what you need to do, okay, in a more balanced way. So I just want to throw that out there. A lot of people are freaking out about health and money, so this is a great exercise to do when you're stuck at home, but I'm also taking into account current circumstances are going to make it a little tough to do some of them, but then maybe, maybe now you try to take the time to spend time with family And you work on your career later, and that's okay. All right. So what I want to look at now is if we do the incremental work in each area like we just talked about, I think we're going to feel better for another reason. It's a better chance of getting our needs met in a balanced way. Remember we talked about needs, whoa, way back way back in the early episodes. And in the show notes, I'll make a reference to them. So if you didn't get a chance to listen to them, you can go back and do that. All right. So I'm talking about emotional and psychological needs is what I mean, for the most part. I mean, there's some like physiological needs in here too. So look at your wheel again, or again, if you don't have it in front of you, if you're walking or whatever, just envision it. And instead of areas of focus, let's look at the needs that are being met 
by each area, especially when we've got it up to like maybe a six or seven or an eight. Okay. Some of these are more obvious than others. Money is pretty obvious, but you know, look at the needs, security needs, feeling secure, being able to sleep at night. Freedom. Money gives us freedom to do the things that we need to do in all the other areas of our wheel. Maybe it's status, maybe it's success. I mean, maybe that's one of your needs. For career, the needs being met are often identity, feeling useful, learning. Our brain needs to keep learning. Purpose, and maybe serving others. Maybe that's a need of yours. I think it is because I think we all need to be needed in a healthy way, not a codependent way. It also means, you know, taking good care of yourself. Just want to put that disclaimer in there. Your romantic partner, the needs being met there are belongingness, right? Love, attention, and maybe some shared meaning. You know, when you create values for you and the kids or what you want to do in retirement or your big vacation you want to plan for next year. What do you want to do with the backyard? What's a house you want to look for? Or get healthy together, shared meaning. For friends and family, similar values, similar needs being met here. From belonging to identity, I want to add safety and numbers. Connection, being seen, feeling needed again. People knowing us, like really knowing our history, knowing us, that helps us feel more secure. That's why old friends from eighth grade, yeah, that's why you love them, because they know your whole history. You don't even have to explain yourself. Spirituality, maybe security for a a lot of people, believing there's a higher power that's going to make all this go away. Maybe a sense of purpose, meaning for our lives feeling cared about, having trust. Some people also incorporate that as trust in themselves when they know there's a higher power that has their back or the universe has their back. Personal growth. Some obvious ones. The needs being met would be greater self-confidence, learning, trusting yourself, having a sense of freedom, i.e. like you can change. So I would say like freedom from woundedness, freedom from mental health issues, the freedom to mature. I know it sounds kind of crazy to say it that way, but deep down we all want to grow and mature and we want to be where we're supposed to be. If we're grown ups, we want to feel grown up on the inside. Even if we never admit that to another soul, we really want that. Your health, self-explanatory, but you need this to Enjoy everything else. You know, we want to feel healthy. And plus, we don't want the stress and the drama of like maybe a chronic condition we're not caring for or not having enough energy, things like that. Your physical environments, I think, needs being met here. A big one is our stress level. Enjoyment, identity, does it represent you? You know, maybe the larger environment as well, right? feeling a part of, feeling you want to care for it. I think part of our physical environment productivity needs get met too, okay? We can show we can do stuff, take care of ourselves. And finally, fun and recreation. You know, creativity is a need. I've talked about that many times. It's a need, guys, not a want. Letting go, being in the moment, having our brain be able to rest so it actually can create healing your brain and your body, we're realizing these days those are needs, not wants. So as you can see, you can take this exercise to many different levels, which I think is really cool, and find ways to create more balance in your life. I do take it a little bit deeper, and I really declare it's also so important for you to honor your values as you're looking at each area of your wheel. Because I want you to feel good about yourself. And I want you to feel congruent. Your insides matching your outsides. Do you see how everything fits together from your values to your beliefs to your self-care to your boundaries to live out those values to getting needs met and feeling grounded? 
because you know what I always say, if you're not getting needs met, you're going to be a mess. So today we talked about the wheel of priorities, aka the wheel of life. We talked about how your beliefs and values should be represented in each area. My hope is that you look at the download this week, maybe print it out if you can, or there's plenty on the internet if you can't find this one, or do whatever exercise you want to do and look at your level of satisfaction and kind of think about and dream about how you can incrementally, right, increase your satisfaction in each area. I think if you really do this, you're going to feel so much more grounded and healthy and peaceful and on purpose because you're going to have a plan. And you know, the best way out of fear is into choice, into planning, into setting goals, not rigidly, not perfectionistic, just some really great goals to meet your needs. Okay, so so if you're already signed up, you will have received the bonus download in your newsletter today, so you're good to go. If not, just hit the show notes at ownitpowercast.com, sign up, and you will get the newsletter with the bonus download, and you can have access to past issues where you can get the downloads for the other episodes. A lot of you are saying you really like the downloads because you can do the homework and take the work a little bit deeper, which I really like that. I like tactical learning. All right. So if you found this helpful, let me know. Shoot me an email. Hit me up on the website. Love to hear how you're doing. I hope everyone is staying sane and staying healthy. And I will put that other podcast out this week for you to enjoy. So you know what I say, pay it forward like so many of you are doing. Keep focusing on loving you and I'll see you next time. We hope you took away some useful insights and tools you can begin using right away. If you did, please leave a positive review and share on your social media. Because could you imagine if everyone in your life really got it together? Remember, own it now, so you can really own it later.